Oh, hello. So here is a exercise to do something like this, uh, creating some clouds that we can use in the background for the 3D rendering, uh, but not the static ones, but rather some uh, animated ones, right? Something you can quite easily do if you just take two pictures and do the following trick with them. So let me, let me first save this here, just in case I want to go back to it again. And so here's the starting point. We start with no animation. I'm going to free this one. And we will create an animation, a placeholder for just three frames. Um, two is really what we need, but apparently we need one more. <laughs> so anyway, so we have initially loaded an image. And in fact, this is really how it would start. Right? So let's, let's free this for good. And initially start... Why am I not full screen? There you go. Um, so initially I start, I go into the folder where uh, Dog Waffle or Howler is installed. And that's typically on the program files, x86, um, Howler subdirectory. And so in here, if you look for JPEG images, you'll see a few. Uh, some of these are whatever they are. But here is a, a number of images. These represent the predefined skies that you have in Puppy Ray, right? So I'm, I'm going to grab the first one here, and that has already a lot of little detail here, as you can see in the preview. Uh, so that's fine. That's great. Let's go load that. And the first thing you'll want to do is store it. So you have a safe copy here, somewhat safe copy. And, and then you can start doing uh, this thing here with the animation, create, just uh, three initially. And uh, then what we'll need is the first two images to be the same. So that's already the case. And then the last one here that will be somewhat derived from that. Or it could be a completely different one, but it works really well with this if you simply move it a little bit. Let's say if you go to the transform, uh, maybe the transform if you want to rotate it also, but even as simple as just shifting it. Right, so you shift it around, and you notice it's not seamless. You might want to do that first. So let's do image make seamless, and uh, just use the default parameters, although you can, you can tinker with this a little bit more. But now each of these images are seamless along the animation. At least I think they are. <laughs> uh, we'll find out soon enough. Maybe I only did the first one. So ideally, you do that before you start loading them in here. Right. So. What we do now is, yeah, these three images are all the same. This one here, though, we need to be different. So I'm going to load the original one there. So that way we have two that are transformed like this and one that is not. More importantly, oh, no, what am I saying? No, we need this one. We need it shifted. We need it seamless. There it is. God, I'm completely messed up here. <laughs> Let me do this again. So... I'm going to start with one image and simply create a animation of three frames. I think this image is seamless. Now I'm going to shift it and the transform shift will reveal it. Yes, it is seamless now. All right. So what I'm going to do is simply move it around a little bit. Now you could also rotate it if you wanted to do a couple of other things to that. The whole move, the whole point is to have some movement, some changes that might simply be uh, showing like the clouds are moving sideways. But it's even more impressive if you actually have that uh, transform the shapes, and that's something you can get quite easily. So I'm going to start. I'm going to store this one because that's the point we want to start from. We have two images that are the same, and then one that is just moving it sideways. And I'm going to store this animation in case we want to experiment with it. And so now let's see how we can turn this into a longer animation. The simpler one is simply to right click here and say time stretch. And when we do a time stretch, we can say instead of those three frames, maybe we want 345 frames, right? With blending, some sort of an interpolation. 
and that's it so that's not going to look super super hot but it's it's essentially supposed to do some sort of a transition the first two are not and then the last one is doing a blend it's not moving it it's not doing an animation so that's not what we want let me go click here to restore the animation starting point now we're going to do it right we're going to go here to the animated category and there you have a motion prediction module. Now, normally the motion prediction module is to is there in order to predict the motion and create sort of a motion interpolation. But when there is too much change, it's failing and it's giving you a transition that is really interesting. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to keep it for dry run. I'm going to say tweens maybe 345 and uh, go. I, I uncheck this. We don't need to look for dropped frames. Don't care about that. Let's go. And so now what you can tell here, it's doing some strange deformation as if it was turbulent air. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Uh, it, it was a dry run, so it didn't actually store it. Um, let's just do it again. See how it's moving these clouds? And it's the side effect of the motion interpolation algorithm failing to find where things are moving to. So it's doing a transition of a different type. And so we are kind of abusing the limits of the algorithm here. Because you know, the motion prediction module essentially uh, would normally show uh, the distance that it's looking for. Uh, to, to see where these tiles, the grid spacing here, where they're moving. And if you move them too far, it can't really find it, right? Even if you go this far, there's a limit to how far it's going to look for those. So what it's doing then is sort of in, uh, in, uh, improvising and getting you a transition that's quite different. You can also change the fudge factor here, maybe down to zero, for it to try even harder. And uh, But I think in this case, it's still not going to be able to do it. So you get some nice little turbulent transitions here. And that's something that we can use um, for animated skies. Then on top of that, we can also move it. And we can use it to do a self-displacement for even more turbulence. So lots of fun stuff to experiment with. Let's first record this one. So no longer a dry run. Let's go. And once we have that, we will close this and store it animation store animation all right these we can toss or minimize them this one we don't need anymore so the next thing we will probably want to do is shift this a little bit sideways maybe even use this stored copy as a way to displace it by itself uh, some displacement maps, right? So first, maybe we'll do this shifting transition. That would be cool with the uh, timeline editor. We can easily do something like uh, a shift or a, where's the transform group? There, do a shifting, uh, even a transform with scaling or, or rotation. But uh, let's just do this. And be careful, there is perhaps a little bit of an edge condition. Maybe it's not after the transform, there are some areas where it's not tileable anymore or, uh, you know, not fully uh, symmetrical or what's it called, uh, seamless. So what we'll do here, though, is we'll store this one keyframe. Uh, actually, that very first frame we need to toss. That's one thing I forgot. At the end of the, uh, when you apply the motion prediction module, uh, remember to go to the very first frame. That one is useless, and then the rest are good. So the first one here, toss it. And then here you can go. And what you'll do is you'll store this one. Then you'll go, I mean, set a, a keyframe here, right? And then go to the last frame and just move it somewhere, which way, whichever way you want the wind to kind of carry these clouds. Uh, maybe something like this here. Right, so now you have a transition, but it's also changing shapes as we're doing this. So I apply that. And uh, so now you should be able to preview that. And you see it's going sideways, but it's also changing shapes. Cool. And maybe it went sideways too fast uh, or too slow. I mean, you can you can experiment with that a little bit. The next thing I want to do, though, is not just see them change shape. I want them further displaced by that original that was not shifting. So I'm going to go, uh, let's actually store both. Uh, animation, store, just in case we want, want, we like one better than the other. So I'm going to store this to disk. 
and then I'm going to say this one here we will use as an animated uh, swap there because why the swap buffer well because when when this image sequence oh and I do have that first frame still wrong so let me close to load this one here and then toss the first frame and then that's really the one I want to store so let's go store that to disk so now we have the two we have this one here that does the transform but doesn't shift this one does the transform and the shifting and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one in the main image let's load this one as the current animation and this one here will simply be as the swap image why the swap image well because when it's in the swap image you can see here when we toggle in the upper right corner s uh, that will show you the swap image um, but what we can do is really oh well, we messed it up here now so <laughs> let me go and reload this one because i messed one frame up and i don't want to spend time looking which one it is okay so what we'll do is this animation we want to displace it by this one this one is flagged as a swap image, so we can now go to the filter here, and we have some options here to do something with the swap. Combine with swap, or in this case, displace by swap. Right? So the pool displace in particular, but pretty much all of these have some interesting effects you can get from that. So you see how it's creating a very turbulent appearance. Maybe you don't want that much, just a little bit, and that will just make it look really interesting. Uh, in terms of an animation. So apply this through the entire animation. And you get this additional wavy pattern or some dis displacement pattern. Let, now let's go play that. And there you go. So that makes an interesting cloud system, I would think, that is uh, looking somewhat turbulent and somewhat uh, different you know and i uh, just wanted to show you that uh, you know something like that you can do and then of course we'll use this as an animated sky and let's see how to do that so when we have a sky system like this we might still want to make it seamless again to make sure it still is so let's go to make seamless there it is and notice the size the dimensions it's 1024 by 400 now it's manageable but it's it might be pushing the limits a little bit in some cases so sometimes what i recommend is make it a little bit smaller uh, if you decide you want to try that uh, you can do that directly on the animation so right here go to the image and change do the resample and instead of 1024 by 400 make sure it is locked on the aspect ratio and maybe make it uh, 800 Right, that's three. Uh, we don't. We don't want three thirteen. Not not an odd number. Maybe three twenty or something like that. Eight nineteen. Oh, it gets ugly here at this point. <laughs> so maybe uh, seven sixty eight by three hundred. There, why not? Let's do something like that. So we now have a smaller animation that will be easier to load as a brush. Why do we need it in the brush? Because that's where Puppy Ray is looking for the sky. If we have a static image. In the brush the custom brush is what it can use if we wanted to use our own sky there are those predefined skies but in addition to that we can also use our own and the way to do that is we load it into the custom brush that's easy if it's a single image it's even more interesting if it is an animation so here we have this animation we might want to even do a little bit more crisp uh maybe some contrast enhancement something like this let's see where's the contrast the convolution color emboss maybe that's too much right you could do some sharpening you could do some contrast uh this one here adjust value or maybe with the uh with the curves uh so you could do a little bit more something like this just whatever you want to to emphasize there, the dark blue or the, the whites and so on, and apply that across the animation. So now, let's say this is the animation we want to keep as the sky, right? So, and maybe not with blue sky, maybe you need to have it uh, sunset conditions, so maybe more of a reddish look for the clouds and darker for the sky, uh, whatever you need. So let's see now, we're going to store that, store this animation. And as it is stored, I'm going to say, okay, here I don't need this anymore, right? Here I'm going to actually load my original 
terrain and create an animation of the terrain for for the walkthrough or for the animation whatever in puppy ray so i'm gonna go and uh load i'm first gonna free this animation free the animation and i'm going to load this one replacing it uh where is it the new document create paste creating new document there so that's replacing the single image elevation map we need the color map here in the swap image so click on the s for swap and then load this one and back to the main image and now that one let's say we want an animation of um, i don't know uh, 100 frames something like that 123 okay so here's our terrain elevation map for the puppy ray render and here is what we want to use in puppy ray as the background sky animated background sky how do we manage to do that we need to flag it as the brush right? so you use this as animated brush and that's where you got to be careful with the amount of memory you're using for this because that could be quite intense in addition to the memory we have for the main animation here but if you have it all working now this is the custom animated brush and you can go to the filters and transform and puppy ray and first thing if you had the uh, renderings before what you want to do is uh un uncheck the anti-aliasing so you don't accidentally do a few hundred rendering passes that you're going to have to wait for um, then you can do a rendering maybe just uh, rotate look around a little bit and the sky is still that original sky but now here's where you switch to your own this is the animated sky and so it's the one that we just loaded in the custom brush and maybe if we find an interesting area like this here we will see something interesting moving in that sky uh we could do that perhaps we can move this uh, the, the the light source a little bit to the other side um let's go see a little bit more of this let's watch there you go something like this uh maybe more wide angle so we really see because we want to see much of that sky as it's moving and uh this the light needs to be a little bit more on the side do we want to see maybe we want to see part of that sky it's really big here though i'm gonna make it a little bit smaller there you go uh let's move the the sky let's move the light all the way to the left left side and far away behind there there you go so we see it reflecting on the ground uh, in the water um, I think that's about it let's see fog we want to have a little bit of fog not that much something like this and then we want to move the the, the whole thing here up a little bit it's not so much about the water in this particular scene it's a bit more about the sky uh, let's say we want to free any keyframes we had earlier and keyframe this one and we are not going to move very far uh we'll focus mostly on what the cloud movement is so what i want to do is actually see the clouds are reflecting in here too which means we want to reduce the elevation of the water let's say just two feet or something like that it's almost flat and don't need to move that so okay hold on let me go back let's go here keyframe that let's change the camera position not the terrain uh let's go something like this here we should see the sky reflecting on the ground maybe make this even a little bit darker there you go and you know if we reduce the wave height to just one it's almost flat and we might recognize pretty well what the sky looks like here so that should be impressive um, I think we have pretty much everything we need. Let's go do one rendering with uh, anti-aliasing enabled. And then once we're done, we simply render that and uh, come back once it's done. So let's see, we have, uh, you know what? I don't need it that high a quality. Oh, it took about five or 10 seconds. I'm gonna increase here the ray steps. I'm gonna decrease the gi samples to just two so that's going to make it a little bit faster and i'm going to decrease also uh or increase the ray steps so it again takes less time to render it's not going to be that fine detail 
if I don't need, if I don't care for that, I don't need that. So that, that should go a little bit faster. The waves will also be a little bit bigger because it doesn't go into that much fine detail at that point. Maybe I can make the sun a little bit bigger after all. Let's say 88. Uh, specularity is good. Uh, ambient occlusion. Let me reduce that a little bit. Global illumination, that is. I want a little bit more contrast there. Go and save that. So we're on the last keyframe. There you go. All right. So, so we have launched the rendering just a few frames ago. Uh, and so now it's rendering that the sky is very slowly moving and changing. It's it's difficult to see it on a single frame here, but you'll you'll see that after that when we when we play it back, right? Because we now have this custom sky from our own animated brush, and uh, that will allow us to to see a little bit more interesting. Uh, we can tell from one frame to the next every 10 seconds or so it's moving slightly to the right, and then on top of that it's also changing that entire cloud structure is moving and changing ever so slightly because of all these things, all these tricks we played with the motion interpolation, motion estimation. All right, um, thanks for watching. We'll see the end result at the end of this uh, tutorial and I uh, will see you next time.